Okay, my presentation is called Taking Heron's Fortress, a Trigonometric Assault. First of all, who is Heron? He is one of the many uh, Greek mathematicians. There's quite a few of them, as you can see, the geekiest Greeks, such as Pythagoras of Samos, uh, who was famous for the Pythagorean theorem, Euclid of Alexandria, he created a book called The Elements, which influenced math for more than 2,000 years. That's a picture of him. Uh, Archimedes of Syracuse. He anticipated calculus by 2,000 years and is famous for inventing the screw pump, which is still widely used today for pumping water. That's an image of him on a cigar box, which I think is pretty cool that they put the mathematicians on a cigar box. Apollonius of Perga, he wrote a book called Conics, which introduced the parabola, the ellipse, and the hyperbola, all geometric shapes. Hipparchus of Rhodes, he was the father of trig, compiled trig tables, and created methods for solving spherical triangles. And a little question, is the spherical triangle the same as a cone? Nope. Spherical triangle is a triangle uh, I guess inscribed would be the word, on a surface of a sphere uh, made by three bisecting lines. And a cone is a right triangle sp spread out in 360 degrees, right there. Another one of these mathematicians was Claudius Ptolemy, who created the geocentric theory of the universe, which is that the Earth is at the center. And we should respect him because his theory, though wrong, lasted 1,400 years, which is a really long time. Now to Heron, Heron of Alexandria, although some people call him Hero. He lived around the time of Christ, and he was a geometer, an inventor. Here's an image of his steam turbine called e an Eolopile, which is a basic steam turbine. And then this is the Palintanon, which is a th stone thrower that he invented. And he also invented the world's first robot, which where uh, this rock sunk as the sand um, moved, fell out the wheels would turn, it would pull a rope, which would turn the wheels. And whenever it hit one of those little, those little pins, it would change direction. And he performed this for a live audience, and they were dumbfounded, amazed, just flabbergasted. But he's best known for Heron's formula, which is a method for solving the area of a triangle. It's a very simple formula. It, it uses the semi-perimeter, which is half of the perimeter of the triangle. The formula states that the area of a triangle is the square root of the semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus one side times the semi-perimeter minus the other side times the semi-perimeter minus the third side. It's more flexible than our standard proof, for area, than our standard formula for area of a triangle, which is A equals one-half BH. You don't need the height, and any orientation is okay. And it's simple, but uh, if you want to prove it using trigonometry, it requires many trig concepts and tools and the Pythagorean and distance formula. To do this, we divide the method. We use what we call a battle map, and that being Heron's Fortress. This is actually, interestingly enough, the battle map for the General Santa Ana's attack on the Alamo, the beginning of the Mexican War. But it was so perfect, we decided to use it for math. Any uh, circles outside this line are concepts from algebra and geometry. Anywhere inside the line are concepts from trigonometry, and on the line are the most basic trigonometry concepts. And the brown are calculated values, things you calculate with other stuff. And these arrows are the rough order in which you calculate things. And we're going to drop rocks down on things that, where we need them most, because these are the rocks we will need. First, um, let's prove a different formula for area which does not require h, the height. And now the traditional proof for area equals 1 half bh is this. You've got a triangle inside, uh, inscribed inside two rectangles. And the triangle's two sides, the sides that aren't b, bisect the rectangles in half. And as you can see, the area of the two rectangles is b it, BH, just length times width. And area of the triangle is one half the area of the rectangle, which is one half BH. Therefore, and th that three, those three dots mean therefore, area of a triangle equals one half BH. So um, here's a formula for area of a triangle 
without h. Here's how we find it. So first, what you have to do is eliminate h from the area formula. And h, the height, can be represented as the sine of an angle, which we'll label a. And in this presentation, we'll use the labels pretty loosely, the variables. So we might call angles theta, alpha, a, b, c. We could give them any name. They could be dead bird. But we're going to keep it simple for now. And to do this, you don't need to know h or the angle, but you do need concept of uh, sine. The sign, you start with a right triangle, as shown here. For a given angle A, sine is the ratio of the opposite side, which is this side, to the hypotenuse, which is that side. So it's uh, A over H. And cosine of angle A is B over H, which is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Another way to express sine and cosine is on what's called the unit circle. The unit circle has a radius of 1, so your hypotenuse is always 1. And this makes it simpler to prove things with sine. Sine of theta is going to be y over 1, which is y. So our sine is just going to be this y. And our cosine of theta is going to be x over 1, which is just x. As angle theta, if you increase angle theta, as it, and as it moves from 0 to 2 pi radians, 2 pi radians is the same as 360 degrees, sine of theta ranges between negative 1 and 1. And it does so with a period of 2 pi, 2 pi radians. Happy pi day, everybody. And here's a little diagram to show it. So that blue line there is sine. And as you can see, as the angle increases, sine is going up. And now as the angle is continuing to increase, sine is going down. And uh, here's a graph of them, a graph of sine. And then here is uh, this diagram down here. That green line is our cosine function on, our, on the x, as you can see. Cosine is now going up. And as you can see, it could just continue to repeat itself forever and ever and ever with a period of 2 pi. Sine of angle A equals h over c, which is the same thing as opposite of our hypotenuse. And with some simple algebra, you conclude that h equals c sine a, just uh, multiplied by c on both sides. And so now that we know that h equals c times the sine of angle A, you just substitute c sine a in for h in your old formula. And you get a new formula for the area of a triangle. Area equals BC over 2 times the sine of angle A. And this is true for both of these cases because sine of 180 degrees minus angle theta equals sine theta, which we'll show here. That angle in there is theta. And that angle in there is 180 minus theta. That red line is the sine of theta, and that red line is the sine of 180 mi minus theta. And as you can see, they are the same and will be the same for any angle. So now that we have this, we've proven this, we're going to drop a rock down on it because we will need it later in the presentation. And now we're going to zoom in to a whole different part of the map, try to prove something called the law of cosines, which is used for solving a triangle um, that's not right, like if you know some of the sides and one angle, or some of the angles and one side, it's used for solving that triangle, finding the rest of the sides and angles. And these are, we're going to be using the Pythagorean and what's called the distance formula to prove the law of cosines. And we'll also need the definition of sine, the definition of cosine, and what's called the fundamental identity. The Pythagorean theorem equals is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Very basic formula. Side a, b, and c. And in this case, x squared plus y squared equals 1. It's the same thing. And we know that y equals sine theta, and x equals cosine theta. So therefore, sine theta squared, which we will pronounce sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And likewise, with some simple algebra, you subtract cosine squared theta and subtract sine squared theta, and you get these identities. 
sine squared theta equals one minus cosine squared theta, and cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. So now we'll review the distance formula, which we'll need several times in this presentation. If you simplify the Pythagorean theorem, you get c, uh, side c here equals square root of a squared plus b squared. So to find, two, fi to find the distance d, you need to drop a third point down, right here. Call this distance y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. And then just substituting values into that, you get d equals square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now that we've proven the distance formula, I'll discuss the law of cosines before proving it. So in any triangle with sides a, b, and c, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times cosine a. b squared equals a squared uh, b plus c squared minus 2 times a times c cosine b. And the third one, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times cosine c. And no, take a look at this. If we let c equals 90 in the third form, cosine c uh, would be cosine 90, which is zero, because at 90 degrees, your x, your x value is zero. And so the formula becomes a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is the Pythagorean theorem. And so Pythagorean theorem is actually a special case of the law of cosines. To derive, to derive the law of cosines, let uh, triangle ABC be any triangle, any oblique triangle. And vertex B right there is at the origin, zero comma zero. And side BC there is along the positive x-axis. So you let XY, which is this point, uh, be the coordinates of vertex A, XY. Actually, we know from here that side B equals Y over C and uh, cosine b, that angle, equals x over c. Uh, so you're substituting these values, y equals c sine b, x equals c cosine b, and thus the coordinates of point a become c cosine b comma c sine b. So these are our coordinates. Um, this distance ac has length b, and point C has coordinates A comma zero. So by the distance formula, distance B equals square root of C cosine B minus A squared plus C sine B minus zero squared. It's just the distance formula substituting in some values. You square both sides and get that. And then you simplify, rearrange terms, uh, pull out the c squared, and you get this. We know that sine squared of sine of any angle squared plus cosine of any of that same angle squared has to equal one. So this just goes away and becomes one. So you get a squared plus c squared times one minus two ac cosine b, and you get this, which is one form of the law of cosines. And to get the other forms, you just solve for these different sides which I'm not going to do because that would be very tedious and long. And you already you get that. So we're going to drop a rock down here, which means we'll need to use these equations again. And now we're going to take a look over here and try to prove what I think is the hardest part of this presentation, the difference identity for cosine. So what we want to prove is an identity for cosine of one angle minus the other angle. And to start to prove this, we start with a circle. It's a unit circle with a radius of 1. So that point's 1 comma 0. And we'll call this angle x, with, which its terminal side is over here. That, and we'll call this green angle, angle y. And that angle in between, obviously, is x minus y. And so we make a triangle out of those two lines and label the triangle point O, point B, and point A, o, o, A, B. And once again, we, we know this uh, f about the unit circle. Uh, so this point we know is cosine y sine y. Cosine y is this over, is this, sine y is that. So this point, 
cosine y is basically x, and cosine and sine y is basically y. So this point is cosine y sine y. And then this point is cosine x comma sine x. And to make the for short, we'll label this so we don't have to call it cosine y sine y. We'll label it a b. But just remember that a is cosine y and b is sine y. And we'll label this point c d. Just for simple, so c equals cosine x and d equals sine x. So now we put this. We have another circle over here, and we're going to rotate this triangle. So it's now over here. It's the same triangle, just rotated. We know that angle is still x minus y, and we'll call that c d. And so this is a new triangle O C D. <laughs> triangle O C D. <laughs> and we know that this point is going to be cosine of x minus y. If you drop a line down the middle, this point is going to be cosine of x minus y comma sine of x minus y. And for simple, so we don't have to write this all out, we'll label this e comma f. And this distance, the distance between point A and point B, we know is obviously going to be the same as this distance because, well, they're the same distance, they're the same triangle, but one's rotated. So using the distance formula, we conclude this. And then you square both sides, you get that. And you factor out, you um, factor out each, each of these um, binomials. And you get this very long expression, which I'm not going to read out. And then you simplify, regroup your terms in here, group them. All these ones, c squared plus d squared, a squared plus b squared, and e squared plus f squared, all equal 1 because sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha equal 1. Let's take a look on this other slide to see. Because e is cosine of x minus y, and f is sine of x minus y. And so e squared of f plus f squared, of course, is going to equal 1. And the same can be said for a and b and c and d. An equation, while simplified, becomes e equals ac plus bd. This equation is just short for a much longer equation. So we replace e, a, c, b, and d with all these values, and we get this. Cosine of x minus y equals cosine of x. Of course, x minus y are both different angles. Cosine of x, cosine of y, plus sine of x times sine of y. On this, we will need that, and we'll drop a rock down on it, because we will need it again. And so now, we zoom out, and we'll zoom in on a different part in here. What we're going to prove here eventually is the double angle for cosine, which is cosine of 2 times an angle. And we already know cosine of a minus b, but there is a way to find cosine of a plus b, which is pretty interesting. You basically rewrite a plus b as a minus minus b, so that it's a difference. And you use this formula. And you substitute in your values, and you get this. And what's interesting is that cosine of a negative angle is cosine of that, of that angle positive, as you can see here. Since cosine is the x value, it won't make a difference whether the angle is negative or positive. It's going to have the same cosine. Cosine a uh, times cosine minus b becomes cosine a times cosine b. Although with sine, it does the sine of it does change. So sine of a negative angle is going to be negative because it's your, ver it's your y value, which does go negative as your angle goes negative. And so once you simplify this out, you get your final equation. Cosine a plus b equals cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. And if you want to find the double angle identity, which is cosine of 2 times x, you basically substitute in y for x into that entity. So cosine of x plus x equals cosine x cosine x minus sine x sine x. And you simplify that down and you get cosine of 2x equals cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And we already proved that cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. And that sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. So we substitute some values in. and Cosine 2x also equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x, or 2 cosine squared x minus 1. 
And so that, these will, will definitely need these two. So we're going to drop rocks down on them. And now we are going to zoom in here and ultimately try to prove a special formula for sine of alpha, which is the variable we're going to use there. So first of all, what we want to prove is what's called the co-function identity for sine. Um, we know this is true. So you substitute in 90 degrees for x and theta for y. And you get cosine of 90 minus theta equals cosine 90 cosine theta plus sine 90 times sine theta. And cosine 90 is 0. We already know that. And so you're left with sine theta. Cosine of 90 minus theta equals sine theta. That's the basic cofunction identity. Now we also know that sine, since sine of a equals cosine of 90 minus a, then sine of a plus b equals cosine of 90 minus a plus b. Just substitute in a plus b for a. Rearrange terms and you get that. And we know this is true. You therefore sub, you substitute sine of a plus b in for there because sine of a plus b is going to be cosine of 90 minus a plus minus b. You get that. Well, cosine of 90 minus a we've already proved is uh, sine a. So here's your formula for sine of a plus b called the sum identity for sine. So we know this is true. And so we will use a similar method as we did for cosine um, 2a. We'll do sine of a plus a equals sine a cosine a plus cosine a sine a equals 2 sine a cosine a. Uh, to substitute uh, a over 2 in for a, or a uh, you get this. And so now we've proven that. And we're going to need that for our, our assault on the fortress. And now we're going to um, prove formulas for 1 plus cosine alpha and 1 minus cosine alpha, which we'll need. Um, by the law of cosines, this is true. This is the law of cosines. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. You subtract b squared and c squared on both sides and divide by 2bc, and you get that. And then you add 1 to both sides, because you can do anything to one side as long as you do the same thing to the other. 1 can be expressed as 2bc over 2bc, so you do that and you get this. Take out the a squared and put the rest in parentheses, which you can do. And you end up with this, a squared minus b squared minus 2bc plus c squared over 2bc. And this, this is what's called a perfect square trinomial. This can be expressed as b minus c squared. So you, you substitute that in, and you get this formula. To do this, you'll need what's called the formula for the difference of squares which is given by x squared minus y squared equals x minus y times x plus y. So I use the same thing here. And that's all over 2bc. And then you can take these brackets out and simplify it down to that. So we just prove that is true. And remember that the perimeter of the triangle equals abc, so the semi-perimeter, which is half the perimeter, is ha one half a plus b plus c. And therefore, 2 times the semi-perimeter equals a plus b plus c. And 2 times the semi-perimeter minus 2b, you uh, subtract 2b from both sides, and you get a minus b plus c. And 2 times the semi-perimeter minus 2c, minus 2c on both sides, and you get a plus b minus c. You then substitute for 1 minus cosine a, you substitute in these values that we just proved, and you get this formula. 2, uh, two times s minus b times s minus c over bc. And that is your formula for 1 minus the cosine of angle a. And similarly, I'm not going to go into this, as it's basically, it uses the same logic. 1 plus cosine a is going to be that. So we've proven all these things, and we're going to need them all, so we'll drop rocks down on them. And now what we need to prove is what's called the half-angle identities, which are cosine of an angle over 2 and sine of an angle over 2. 
So remember that the double angle identity, remember the double angle identities for cosine of two theta. Those are our double angle identities. And substitute uh, a in for two theta, you get this, and then you add one on both sides and get that, and do the same logic over on this side. And we know these two, because one plus cosine a equals two s times s minus a over bc, and one minus cosine a equals two s, two times s minus b times s minus c over bc. So you substitute these in, and you get these two formulas. You cross out the twos on both sides, and you get, and take the square root of both sides, and get cosine of a over two equals that, and you do the same logic on this side. So these are two formulas for cosine of an angle over two and sine of an angle over two. So we'll drop rocks on these, as we will need them. Okay, it's now time for what we'll call the final assault, which we're actually going to prove here, Heron's formula. So, remember that area equals BC over <coughs> two times the sine of angle A. So therefore multiply by two on both sides, you get that, and divide by BC. You get sine of angle A equals two times the area of the triangle over BC. And we know that uh, sine of two theta equals two sine theta cosine theta. And we know that this is true, that sine of A equals two sine over two times cosine A over two. Then you can do some substitution and get uh, this. We know that sine A over two equals that and cosine A over two equals that. So we'll substitute those values in into one mega equation right there. Two times the area of the triangle over BC equals this. Multiply inside the square roots. You can cross out the twos on both sides. Square root of B squared C squared equals BC. And cross out the BCs. And once you do that, you get wham, Heron's formula. Thank you for coming. What? Thanks.